you know, the liberals got upset when conservatives mocked Justin Trudeau doing a striptease for a fundraiser. And they used that in an ad. Oh, liberals, they're so upset, blah, blah, blah. Well, have you seen what they're doing for their own fundraiser now? They're having a ladies' night with Justin. And the Evite has him just looking oh so dreamy. Justin unplugged. What's your favorite virtue? Do you come here often? Well, Michelle Rempel, cabinet minister in the conservative government, minister for Western economic diversification, joins us in the studio because you caused a problem with this online because you just made a tweet about it. And all of a sudden, all kinds of people were saying, hold on, this isn't right. Well, you, actually, when I saw the advertisement, my first reaction was, this this can't be for real. And when I found out it was, I was shocked that... There's lots of jokes based on it now yeah. in less than a day since you tweeted it out, but I thought it was a joke, too. Well, it kind of is in, in the sense that it's a serious issue. You know, the, the issue that I took with, first of all, outside of the font and is that it's not issues-based. Th this is, Justin is a sex symbol, come pet his hair. Yeah, and I think it is absolutely fair to say that, uh, you know, political leaders should be engaging um, folks from all different demographics in Canada and to have a good public policy debate. That's part of our jobs. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how do you do that, right? Yeah. So if you look at the questions on this invitation, they're not issues-based. They're you know, they, there's a tone to it, which is um, not what I would use in trying to do outreach. Well, that's why I said, you know, I, one of them is, what's your uh, favorite virtue? And that's why I said, do you come here often? It sounds like a pickup line. It, it, I think that there's a reason why people had such a visceral reaction to it. And, you know, I think that that's something that we all need to be cognizant of in looking well, at this thing. It's, it's just... Part of why uh, this story also took off today, online and elsewhere, was because of the reaction that you... Got. The pushback that you got from leftists on Twitter was unreal. And I want to get to some of those because you tweeted out, I don't agree with their politics, but JT, that be Justin Trudeau, has some badass women in his caucus. They must want to, well, I can't imagine. I I'm guessing you're pointed out that the women might be upset. But then these tweets started coming in. Real leaders don't have female-centered events. They give them junior cabinet posts and seats in camera angles behind them in QP. Before we get to the next one, you want to respond to that? I do. You know, that makes me so angry because at 33 years old right now, I am the youngest cabinet minister, as, as a woman, uh, youngest cabinet, uh, female cabinet minister that's been appointed in Canadian history. How did I get into that seat? I am damn proud to sit in that seat every day because I had to put my name on a ballot. I worked for years in a professional career that was very successful. And I worked very hard in Ottawa and in my constituency to sit around the cabinet table and have and have that seat in the second row. And, and so now, now for pointing out that someone is, you know, just trying to use their looks to fundraise, you're being told you only have your seat because you're pretty. And I just that's kind of insulting. I can't I can't believe that yeah. that's that's the level of discourse that well, we have. It gets worse for women in politics. It I, gets, know. I know you've seen these tweets, but it gets worse. Uh, Jerome Williams. Oh, no, hold, sorry, we have this one. Uh, Michelle has sex with the... Go, go back to that one, because I'm sorry this is crude, but it's truly disgusting. Michelle has sex with a sheet with a hole in it between them, I'm sure. I don't know what that means, but that is thoroughly disgusting. But this is the level of discourse when you challenge the left. Uh, Jerome Williams said, have a little respect for the country and learn how to sit in your parliament chair without looking like a hooker. Is this... Is this engaging you on an issue? Let's just show the, uh, the the Twitter picture that they're referring to. I don't think that you look like a hooker at all. This is your Twitter picture, and this is what they're referring to. You're smiling. It's casual. It's a Twitter picture. I, these are attacks on you for questioning someone. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable sitting here and here talking about this because... I should be sitting in here talking to you about my portfolio and the things that we're doing to spur innovation in Western, the Western Canadian economy or my background or the economy or anything. Uh, but this is, this is the type of thing that I think a lot of women are subjected to. And while it's coarse and, and crass to talk about it, I think that we need to fix it because we need to have more women elected to office. Regardless of your political stripe, it's good to see women elected. And I just... I think that a lot of times women will see this and they'll say, you know what, I don't want to deal with the crap that she has to put up with. And that's a barrier to entry and we need to remove that. So I think that 
I, you know, I, I well, hope that the organizers of this event can understand that, you know, I, I think one of them had said, well, why would a cabinet minister get involved in this? Well, because a cab as, a, as a female cabinet minister, I feel a responsibility to say, women in this country deserve more and a higher level of conversation. Ask me about the economy. Ask that woman about health care. Ask them about the environment, Keystone XL, anything. But don't, don't think that we have to play in a pink sandbox in order to have our voices heard. And it's, you know, as a cabinet minister, I use my, my platform to say that some things are right and things, some things are wrong. Nothing is just wrong. I, I know that, and we're out of time, so I won't be able to get to the clip, but Nikki Ashton in the NDP, Megan Leslie in the NDP, also standing up and saying this is wrong. They're disagreeing with the organizers of the liberal event who think, well, you're just in this to uh, stir up controversy. Well, and there were some liberal organizers as well that have spoken out against this, and I think it's because it's an issue that transcends party lines. You know, the reason why I made the comment about, um, you know, the liberal caucus and some of the female members in there is I don't agree with a lot of their political views, and I will use my elected officials' position to argue them and debate them, but I have respect for the fact that they've made it into office. Yeah. And there's a lot of strong women there with really... Um, deep opinions on issues and you know again you don't have to do agree on something to respect someone else and I think that when we you know take the debate down to the lowest common denominator, denominator talk in sensual terms rather than issue based everyone it does and All it's right. unfortunate Minister Rempel thanks so much thank next you. time we'll talk policy